In previous videos, we learned that the integrated rate law can reveal the relationship between the concentration of a reactant and time. In this video, we'll use integrated rate laws to identify the concentration of a reactant after a given amount of time. In this problem, we're told that the concentration of a reactant was monitored over the course of a reaction. After obtaining these concentration and time data, plots of concentration versus time, natural log of concentration versus time, and reciprocal of concentration versus time were constructed, and the results are shown below. The rate constant for this reaction is 2.90 times 10 to the negative fourth. If the initial concentration of A was 0 0.10 molar, what is the concentration of A after 900 seconds? In order to solve this problem, the first thing we need to do is to determine the order of this reaction. We have three graphs which we can use to help determine the reaction order. The first graph, concentration of A versus T, is the zero order graph. The second graph, natural log of concentration versus T, is the first order graph. And the third graph, the reciprocal of concentration versus T, is the second order graph. You should recall from a previous video that whichever graph produces a straight line, that graph will indicate the order of the reaction. In this case, we see that the only graph that is linear is natural log of concentration versus time. Therefore, we know that this reaction in the problem is a first order reaction. You might wonder, when you look at the problem, why no units were given for the rate constant. In this case, I wanted you to use the graphs to determine the reaction order instead of using the units for the rate constant to determine the reaction order. Before we continue, and now that we know that this is a first order reaction, we'll need to decide which of the integrated rate laws we should use to determine the concentration of A after 900 seconds. Since we have a first order reaction, we'll use the first order integrated rate law which is the natural log of the concentration of A at time t is equal to negative rate constant times time plus the natural log of the co initial concentration of A. Now that we know this reaction is first order and we know which integrated rate law we can use, we can assign the given values to their variables. We know that the rate constant is 2.90 times 10 to the negative fourth, and now that we know it's first order, we could assign units to the rate constant of seconds to the minus one. We know the initial concentration of A is 0 0.10 molar, and we know that the time, T, is 900 seconds. Now that we've assigned the given values, we can solve for the natural log of the concentration of A at 900 seconds. We plug in the values and we get the natural log of A at 900 seconds is equal to negative 2.90 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds to the minus one times 900 seconds plus the natural log of 0 0.10. When we multiply the rate constant and the time, we get a value of negative 0.261. When we take the natural log of the initial concentration, we get negative 2.303. When we add those two values together, we find that the natural log of the concentration of A at 900 seconds is negative 2.564. When we read the problem, we see that we are looking for the concentration of A after 900 seconds, not the natural log of the concentration. Therefore, we need to convert the value for the natural log of concentration into the concentration. You should recall from your algebra classes that the inverse function of the natural log is the exponential function e. In order to get the concentration after 900 seconds, we take e raised to the natural log of the concentration at 900 seconds, so the concentration is equal to e raised to the negative 2.564 power, and when we enter that in our calculators, we see that the concentration after 900 seconds 
is 0 0.0770 molar. By now, you should be able to identify the order of a reaction from graphs of the concentration versus time, natural log of concentration versus time, and reciprocal of concentration versus time. You should also be able to select the correct integrated rate law to use based on the order of the reaction. Finally, you should be able to use the integrated rate law to find the concentration of a reactant at time t, or the rate constant, or the time, or the initial concentration, depending on which of those values are given to you in the problem and which the problem asks you to determine.